I think as long as I've been making dances, I've been looking at what's the link between dance and being alive. And it strikes me that that is what connects us, regardless of faith or age or context, upbringing, environment. We are human beings living on this earth. And I know that sounds incredibly obvious, but I think we rarely stop to think about what it is to exist and to look at the fundamentals of existence. So for me, it's my way of, I guess, quite idealistically, bringing people together to share that. It's a kind of unsaid, unspoken moment together. And that, I think, is what connects us all. It's just very difficult to talk about. So dance being a non-verbal art form is kind of my way of having a go. Now, no rush here. Take your time. Let it really ease and s suspension, long suspension. Little bit more together, Oscar. Uh, not a line. Let's go behind Hannah, Oscar. I do street dance, ballet. I do um, tap. I do. And I've tried nearly every single type of dancer. Uh, we both love dancing, and uh, we thought it would be a. Um, uh, a lifelong memory for us both. It's a reawaken something in, in me. She gives you this great expanse of, of floor, puts on some really interesting noises, and you just express yourself. And I think we as human beings don't do that ever, so um, it's really good to do. My interest is in constantly looking at my relationship with my audience and who that is and broadening that and working out how I can do that without any sense of um, dumbing down what I do. I'm just trying to present it in different ways. Because of the, the kind of movement I'm interested in finding, it's really not in a way related to you being a dancer, it's related to you being a person to a certain extent. She asked me to write some music, some choral music. Her daughter sings for the Finchley Children's Music Group. Um, so I wrote for them. And um, a sound score as well. absolutely didn't want the, the dancers on a stage. Here, on this kind of civic space that would have had tea dances, parties, weddings, and I'm saying this is also where you can soar, where you can touch, where you can um, actually find the sublime, in a way, in your own bodies and in what you share. And we saw 160-ish people over the course of two different weekends. We saw different people in different age groups, basically. So we saw kind of nine to 13 year olds and then them teenagers and then adults aged between 20 and 40, 40 and 50, and then kind of over, over 60. Rosemary wanted to have pipes appearing in it and sort of walking through it in a kind of calling way. So the bells very much kind of call people in. Uh, the Piper also calls people in, it's sort of bringing people together sort of idea. But today's the first time I've seen sort of 50, 70 odd people running around the room and leaping and jumping and flocking and swarming and it's, uh, it's quite amazing. It's really it's, it's making me kind of tingle a bit really. My background is ballroom dancing, actually, so <laughs> this is how I got involved with it. Anything else like this I would like to do, yes, it's the first time I've actually done this kind of thing. Though I've been dancing a long time, it's the first time I've actually performed to a paying audience at all. You just see everyone is equal here. There's no difference in age, like even the older ones mess about more than the younger ones, so <laughs> it's brilliant. For me, it's very affirming. Again, I haven't done a project like this, like this for about 10 years, so it affirms to me that it is possible that I see people grow, that I see people mature, 
and that's it's humbling and it's terrifically rewarding.